Welcome to the Deer Society Podcast. Here's your host, Brian Lemke. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to the Deer Society Podcast. I'm Brian Lemke, joined by Chris and JJ Ducart today. And we are in that time of year where it's kind of weird. It's like, you know, we we talked about it before the podcast. You know, what do we want to talk about? What's valuable to you guys out there listening? Uh, we just got back from the ATA show here this past week. So um, we're going to talk about that, some of the cool stuff we saw there, some of the interaction in the industry, um, as well as kind of just what we're doing right now this time of year, both in the field and outside of the field um, to kind of prepare for the upcoming months and then eventually the upcoming hunting season. So um, just kind of updates all around and and what everybody's doing and uh, what we've been seeing right now this time of year, getting ready for the the months ahead. So um, Chris, I'll kind of kick it off to you. How is ATA? Um, You know, that's that's a show obviously you guys do every year. Um, Maybe give some people some background that don't uh, fully understand what the the Archery Trade Association show is um, and then kind of how it went this year. Yeah, well, thanks for the intro, Brian, and thanks for inviting me to your beautiful studio here today. You're welcome. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so the ATA, um, there's a couple main trade shows, I suppose, when it comes to the hunting industry. Um, A lot of people might have just heard the names before, um, but yeah, you got the ATA, which is your archery trade show, uh, typically kicks off first, and then it's usually followed uh, a couple weeks later by the SHOT show. Um, basically, Archery Trade Association, that's your more archery-focused um, hunting products, outdoor products in the archery realm. Um, SHOT show, sort of a similar thing. I think it kind of you know started off very outdoor hunting-based in its earlier days, um, more firearm-based. Um, but it's definitely morphed throughout the years as the popularity of just, you know, I think with all like the Iraq wars and a lot of the gun control stuff, like, you know, the paramilitary and like all that sort of gun stuff really took off. And that's kind of really blown up as that part of the show. But again, that's more your firearms based show. So the ATA one, we being mainly archers here when it comes to hunting and deer hunting, that's the one we focus on, um. That's one where you can really focus heavily on the hunting side. And like, like I said, there's not a lot of the extra stuff. Like I said, if you go to shot, it's mainly guns and stuff like that. Uh, so ATA is a good show for us. Um, yeah, it's just good. You can, we go there. We basically uh, touch base with a lot of our different connections throughout the industry. I mean, um, it's great for like JJ and then you guys meeting with a lot of like um, pro staffers, um, different companies that we work with in the industry. Um, for us on the wholesale production side of things, it's where all the archery shops and people connect in the archery industry on um, the sales side of things come in and then um, rewrite a few select amount of orders and stuff like that. Um, but then, you know, with a lot of the bigger retailers, that's where you can have some of your uh, more strategic meetings and just talk on, you know, game plans going into the air. And it's really, really where you kind of kick off the, I guess on our side as a manufacturing hunting product company, uh, it's where you really kind of kick off the year, um, get orders started and really just, you know, show any new products you got to bring to market and have all those strategic discussions and start game planning for the production sales cycle, uh, basically starting right now. How was the, the turnout? You know, I know a lot's changed in the past two, five, 10 years, even with the ATA show. Um, you know, based on past shows, how was the, the turnout and just people there, booths there, um, you know, overall show, what's your, what's your take, a uh, takeaway from this year compared to others? Yeah, it's definitely changed throughout the years. And, um, some of those changes have come with just the interest, uh, the industry. And I would say just the public in general. Um, and then some of them have also been based on just, um, our company's growth and change throughout the years. So, um, the show footprint, um, shrunk down and kind of consolidated a little bit more. Um, I'd say in some ways makes it a little bit more efficient. You know, you have exactly what you need there. There's not too much extra. It's not too overwhelming, uh, especially for the buyers and stuff like that. Um, and a lot of that kind of morphing kind of came in and took drastic strides. I would say when, you know, the whole pandemic COVID thing came about and, you know, they were restricting um, what everybody could do. So I think a lot of 
just the way orders were written and those processes and those connections changed a little bit, kind of streamlined, um, maybe became a little bit less dependent on those face-to-face -face meetings. So I think that also brought in a little bit of, uh, you know, consolidation of the the trade shows and how they work. Um, uh, they seem to be coming back with, you know, more people and, you know, more interactions at the shows and stuff like that since that's happened. So you're starting to see a little regrowth on that. Um, but then I think another factor in too is just kind of our company and, you know, we got a good swath of sales reps in the team that we work with on that. So, I mean, even before some of these trade shows happen, we already have sales reps meeting with some of our you know, stores and our customers throughout there. And they're already writing orders. And, you know, then it turns into less of writing orders at the show and a lot more of these, you know, companies coming in, just seeing what's new, um, meet and greet talk and maybe getting some pricing and catalog, but then they're going to go off and write these orders with the, you know, the well-established um, relationships they already have with our rep group. So it doesn't necessarily have to be done right there at the show. It's more of just kind of connect, meet and greet, see what's new. And yeah, and like as we've grown on the sales side thing too, you know, bigger retailers have come to play and, you know, that's where we have some of those strategic meetings and that's where we can kind of, you know, execute on those and come up with, you know, big, huge, you know, growth level plans and production plans um, just based on those meetings. Right on. Can you share, I don't know how much you can share or not share at this point, but um, can you share like how it went for you guys at Illusion this year? Like any new things happening, new stores, um, you know, what what that looks like for, for you guys or what you took away from the Illusion side at the show? Or can you not share any of that or a lot of that yet? No, there, I mean, there, yeah, I mean, anything I can, that we kind of went through, I can in general share. Um, I mean, we've kind of basically, we, we've came into a lot of big retailers in the last year. Um, so Walmart, Tractor Supply, for a couple of years now, Tractor Supply. Um, you know, just growth there. Um, you know, we get a lot of positive feedback from our customers um, and the big retailers. We do pretty well with all of them. So that's the part where it kind of helps with us. And, you know, when we go to these shows, it's more so like, hey, what do you got that's new? Or they already kind of know what they want to do with this because we've had such successful sell-through rates um, at the stores. Our products do very well. Um, you know, a lot of trust with our consumers out there and, you know, it feeds through back through these stores. So, you know, thanks to all of our customers and our followers out there. I mean, you know, we tried to bring a great product to you guys and build that trust with you and, you know, continue to do so. So that helps us grow. But yeah, they just come back to us and just, you know, expanding on our lines through some of those big, you know, those bigger retailers. So like Walmart wants to pick up and carry more of our products and stuff. Cause like I said, we have such good sell through with our products. Uh, the consumers believe in it and the, you know, as we come out with new products, we try to bring products that are actually going to work products that we use, we believe in, and we can prove that work on the field. We bring that to you and then the retailers, you know, trust that and they believe that we're going to provide a good product to their customers. So once we do get established, then we're, you know, it's just kind of just snowballs and, you know, helps us just grow as long as we continue to bring good products to the customer. Um, potential for some other big ones, but it's kind of tough too, because when it's a first time customer, we don't physically, you know, women have agreements and paperwork gets in place, but until you physically have a PO cut, you don't know hundred percent, you might know 98%. So sure. don't want to just say names and uh, actually, yeah, for sure. You know, I'm sending out PO's and stuff like that. Right on. Well, no, that's, that's awesome. You know, one of the cool things that, that we get to see here every day is like uh, the people behind the brand, the people behind the products and, you know, Obviously, Chris, you know, said thank you to the customers and the and the the retailers and and things like that. But it's it's cool, like the guys that are behind the product. You know, Chris talks very humbly about you know we use the products and and everybody here does. Um, but we see, you know, like from my standpoint, I can see daily the effort that goes on behind the scenes, and it's it's so much to do with these two guys sitting here. Um, you know, and the dedication and the passion and, you know, stemming from, you know, Mike as well, um, who is, comes in and plays the consultant role every once in a while here now. But, uh, you know, the, the passion and the drive and the commitment to creating great products and continuing that innovation with new products and advancements. Um, it's just cool to see that. And it's cool that, like, you guys are such real people, real hunters, um, like, 
we need to do more to showcase that because the dedication behind these products and the, and the products have been so successful, like to just see you guys live it and breathe it and do it, run it every day is, is pretty cool and, and pretty humbling. Um, so for you guys out there, obviously, you know, you, you hear Chris say thanks and you hear these guys and JJ and he and Mike all the time talk about this stuff, but I mean, it's, it's real people and, and you guys deserve a, a lot of credit and it's just cool from my perspective to see that. So. Um, let's kind of transition. So obviously, Chris, you're super busy at ATA, you know, just customers and dealing with people and, and managing that whole space. JJ, you're obviously busy there as well on that side of it, but also more from a partner standpoint, um, partner product standpoint, that kind of thing. So give me your kind of role there at ATA or, or, um, kind of what you do there and, and how it went this year. Yeah, I would say that a lot of us, since you know our team's not that big, we kind of just wear a bunch of hats. Um, so even back here at the office, it's weekly meetings on operations or sales or product development, media. You know, we're all kind of involved in, in a lot of the strategy for that. When it comes to ATA, um, you know, we all kind of sit in on on some of the same meetings, whether it's talking with our sales reps or buyers. On the, so it's kind of like two different businesses. You know, people probably see deer society a lot and they think all oh, these guys hunt all the time and edit footage and do all this fun stuff but the reality is that 90 percent of what we do um is not in the field more definitely more for chris probably 98 percent so yeah, there's just a whole another world that we it's it's you know an actual real job it's not just out hunting filming having fun all the time although we do that a lot too in the fall so yeah, just a lot of strategy talks so at ATA. You know, we're talking with partners, whether it's sponsors of of our platform, um, people that film for us. You know, we talked to Ben Rising from Whitetail Edge, Joe Miles. You know, just meeting with all these people in person. And that throughout the year, it's more of a digital context. So you're calling them, texting them. You know, maybe jumping on a Zoom call or something, but you don't get that face to face. So going to ATA, it's just nice to be able to sit down. You know, have time, a little bit of time. Um, relax, chat, and just kind of cover stuff in person. So that's that's real nice. Um, but basically, we all sit in on, on all the conversations. You know, Chris executes the operations. I'm more on the media side. And um, yeah, that's just, there's just a lot more that goes on than what meets the eye for the Deer Society followers, for sure. Yeah. It'd be interesting. It'd, we should probably dig into it a little bit more at some point and just give some more updates. I know it's kind of more boring though. Like it's the yeah. boring part of the business. Yeah, I think it's an interesting part though. Like I said, I think we take it for granted. <laughs> and I, I think, honestly, what I said before, like I get to see it every day, but I think that's cool. I, I think a lot of people would enjoy seeing that because I do think it's it's interesting. You know, Mike always talked about it like it's the American dream, you know, in a sense. And in a way it is like, and I, I think that's cool. Um, you know, as much of it as people see it's hunting, you say so much of it is behind the scenes. Um, and that's, that's true, but it's all, you know, for that, that common goal of, you know, whether it's the product stuff or the marketing stuff or all of it, like the goal is to create the best products and for the consumer, for us and the consumer to just have a better experience in the field. Like that's with that end goal. It's hard to say that like, it's a job, right? I could be wrong. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, for sure. It's a job trying to just get the best products out there as possible. And now that's in the illusion side of things. Dear Society, we kind of look at as more of that educational marketing side of the business. Um, but the products have to match um, the visuals and what we're actually talking about in the content too. So yeah, it's a balancing act, like trying to make sure everything we do is, is advantageous to the hunter. Um, so we're using them out in the field making changes as we go. We can't, you know, we're not a huge company, so we're not moving fast on, on making new products and, and making changes, but we do try to always think ahead, you know, with the food plot system that took multiple years to, to create and test. We got a new deer call that we're launching. It's actually just more of a revise of the extinguisher, <clears throat> new molds, uh, new tooling, just needed a little bit of an upgrade. So, so we got some, some cool features to that that'll be launched in this fall. Um, I think that's the first time that we've actually talked about that in the public. Yeah. A little bit of a, it's not a completely new product, but it is a, a refresh of the extinguisher, new and improved version. 
Yeah, and that's kind of what AK allows us to do too is, you know, show them what we're doing on that side, you know, like, hey, we, you know, same extinguisher deer called just, you know, kind of revise a little bit, I guess a refresh, whatever you want to call it, you know, not necessarily the 2.0, but, you know, just kind of a little better ergonomics on it, you know, a little tweaks to it. Um, something we had to do to the mold anyways, um, our old deer call mold, we've pumped so many deer calls, so I don't even know what the number could even be at this point. It'd be interesting to actually sit down and look back at how many deer calls we actually ran through that mold. Um, but every single deer car that's on the market is run through that mold. And we've been doing this for quite a few years now. And so all these signatures out there. That, so now we needed the new mold. So we might as well, we figured we might as well just kind of go through, add those little tweaks and, you know, things we wanted to just kind of improve on it since we had to do that anyways. And I mean, even that process, like I said, without really reinventing the deer call that we already make, the extinguisher, you know, just making these little tweaks to it. I mean, this has been at least a year long mm-hmm. project on it. Just because we're so. Yeah. I mean, particular. we, yeah, you make changes and it's such a fine tuned instrument that, um, you make changes and it's not quite right. You got to get new product sample shot. Uh, we got new read material. Uh, working on a new down down spot or tube, so all these things you got to test out, make sure they work, and you're not it, basically you're not designing a product and releasing it until it's tested, which it doesn't happen with every company in the industry. So um, something that we definitely take pride in. Still American made. That was a big part of it too. We wanted to keep it here, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, just excited about that call. So that'll be coming out this fall. We'll keep you posted on that. And then um, as far as new stuff from Illusion, we had the fertilizer. We're releasing a two pack fertilizer. So instead of just having to buy the whole system, we'll we'll, we'll start to break the items out and let people kind of a la carte it. Um, the black rack. There's a silencer now that we have for that. It keeps it nice and quiet in your pack. Um, Let's you carry it in and out of the field real well. We weren't really 100% sure on like the feedback or how that item might take, but I know you talked to quite a few people. Yeah, a lot of people really kind of gravitated towards that. Item. Gravitated toward that. Um, then we got some stuff in the works on the back end, um, some phase product line extensions, <clears throat> always working on the food plots, always working on the deer call. Going to help uh, the Mountain Mike's brand coming up. That's going to be part of what we're doing here. Um, working on that too. So yeah, a lot of back-end stuff, a lot of product development, a lot of packaging, a lot of marketing. And kind of back to what you guys both said. I didn't say it, so I want to say it. But uh, we appreciate all the customer support. That's the only reason we're here. Because without customers, without people that believe in what we do, use the products, are successful in the field, where we wouldn't be here. So... Definitely thanks to our customers, 100%. No doubt. So <clears throat> talked a lot about the illusion side. How about on the Deer Society side? <laughs> Anything new, cooking there, interesting things to talk about um, for 2024? Yeah, Deer Society did really well last year. We had a lot of good reach. Um, seemed like a lot of good feedback on the videos. We're going to keep expanding. We'll try to do more podcasts, be more consistent with that. We moved last spring. Um, so we had a pretty big gap in the podcast output, so we'll continue with the podcast. Hunt breakdowns, we have more this year. We have probably stronger a stronger lineup of, of hunts. Absolutely. Um, continue to, to incorporate some of our core teams, also looking for new teams. I know we had some <clears throat> pretty good footage coming from some new, new guys this year, so we'll be getting some new team members incorporated into Deer Society. I think, um, you know, between Connor, Brian us, we're, we're going to start putting out some videos kind of explaining how other people can get involved with Deer Society, whether that's just trying to start out filming or if somebody's been filming for a long time, um, send us your footage. Definitely want to want to look at it and see if it makes sense. If, if you want to be a part of the team, always looking for new members. Um, well, we have such a great core, core team right now that, you know, it's not a necessity, but we're always, you know, looking for for the for someone new. Yeah, always looking to expand upon that, you know, new faces, new content, different styles, different places. Like, that's always cool, you know, because in, in the end, you know, we have a core group of guys that, you know, hunt here and hunt in Iowa and hunt, you know, Kansas or wherever, you know, pretty Midwest heavy, which is is great, um, you know, but it's always cool to to diversify a little bit too and see some different content. So definitely reach out to to any one of us if, if you're interested in, in trying to, 
become part of the Dear Society. It's at whatever level that is, because um, we're always open to that. Uh, the other thing I want to mention real quick too is JJ said <clears throat> we're going to be doing more podcasts. If there's something that you want to hear more about, like don't ever be afraid to shoot any one of us a message or through the Dear Society or through the website, whatever it is, um, <clears throat> comment, social media. Um, you know, this podcast, we do this for, you know, you guys, we do it to, you know, give not just updates of what we're doing, but in the end, like advice, education, help you guys be more successful. So if there's topics and things that you want to hear about, um, definitely shoot those our way because we would love to bring more value to everything that we do um, from a Dear Society standpoint and delivery standpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing to look forward to this year, um, going to have at least one uh, really cool film coming out this year. That, that'll be Adam's film. Um, you've heard us talk about it. If you listen to the podcast, pretty cool um, story there. And and he kind of put a, a some closure to that this past fall. So I'm um, going to be releasing a Dear Society film there, and that'll be pretty Pretty epic one to definitely look forward to. Yeah, another quick thing too, um, on the business side, you know, we're always looking at partners for the Dear Society platform, but I, I can say that I think we have some of the best partners in the industry, like the products we use. We've used them, typically we use them for multiple years, in some cases, almost a decade before we even partner with some of these companies. So when you see us using some of these products, like it's something we believe in, years in advance before we even partner with them. So um, the support there has been really, really nice too. Um, We appreciate that a lot from our sponsors and our partners because again, we choose them because we believe in them. It's not just because we're trying to chase, chase money. So definitely appreciate. And we have good relationships with them. A lot of the people, you know, they're, some of them are filming for our, our Dear Society platform. Um, They just, you know, they make great products and they fit right in line with what we do. Yeah, and I think a lot of that comes to from having our having our own brand and stuff like that. And you know, having like the Dear Society and all our contests so heavily linked to our brand and our products that, you know, doesn't really allow for us or really nor do we want to um dilute that by any means by just bringing in other products that don't serve a purpose or help actually promote, you know, what we're trying to promote here. And that's, you know, bring things to the table and um be successful hunters in our own right, but then showing, you know, our consumers, our followers, you know, how they can do that themselves and just showing them the the tools and the tricks of the trade that we use. And, you know, not just about what we can accomplish, but showing you how you can learn from us and take and do these things and use these tools to accomplish, you know, any of your goals that you want to accomplish. No doubt. Um, I think we can kind of start talking about, hey, well, anything else from ATA? There was a film festival. There was, a, yeah, there was. That's, yeah, there was a film festival. Um, so every year at ATA, um, they have what is called the Badlands Film Festival, and I think this is the eleventh one um, that they've had. So their eleventh year doing it, and it's pretty cool. So Badlands puts on a uh, an event. It's it's called the Badlands Film Festival, where um, they rent out a giant theater. Um, it's usually Friday night of the ATA show. And all these people come and they have people submit films, you know, beforehand, and then they'll pick a certain number of finalists. This year, there's two categories. There's short film and there's feature film. Uh, I think there was four finalists in the short film category and nine um, in the feature film category. Um, They said it was their strongest year yet with the number of, of submissions. I think they had over, just in the feature film category, over 100 films entered. Um... And so that's always something we look forward to. It's cool. Badlands does a great job with this event. And the cool thing is, like, it's something for the producers. Uh, You know, being in this industry for a while now, we used to have, like, the Golden Moose Awards back in the day um, for, like, the Outdoors Channel and Sportsman's Channel. And that was a way to recognize, you know, uh, shows and producers. And they've kind of done away with that since. Um, So for Badlands to put on this film festival, just a way for, you know, producers, content creators, and, and, and brands um, to get their message out there and, and for people to appreciate it and uh, and also get some recognition. So um, thank you to those guys that put that on. But um, kind of cool. So everybody goes in there, you watch the films, and then it's a live vote. So, you know, there, there's not a lot of political influence. Like it's you watch the film and it's, it's text to vote. 
um, a few years ago. And we've only entered films um, just really, really two times. The first one we ever entered was uh, was Love Dad, the, the Dear Seti film. That was 2020, I believe. I think it was 2020. Um, and we were fortunate enough to win the feature film category um, that year. That was pretty cool of us there and, and seeing Love Dad win. Um, and then entered one this year. It was called uh, This Is Elk Hunting. And um, we produced a show on Sportsman Channel. It's called Love the Grind. And uh, Jeff Altoff is is one of the hosts there. And it was kind of his lifelong dream and two-year quest to shoot his first elk. Um, so two trips to Nevada. Did a feature film around that. It was nominated and then ended up taking second place in the film festival this year. So that was that was pretty awesome. Um, second place behind a, a super deserving um, film. It was about a little girl. I think she was 11 years old um, and shot her first buck uh, with her dad and her dad was filming and just priceless reaction. Makes a great shot. Um, just like full of emotion. It was funny. She, uh, so this deer comes in and I mean, there's a whole story to it, but this deer ends up coming in and she shoots it and her dad, he's shaking, she's shaking. And he's like, that, that was the big one I've been hunting. Like I've been hunting this deer all year. And like, that was him. And she's like, that's your big one. And he's like, yeah. And she's just crying. And she says, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, like just this, it, it was epic story, epic reaction and, and well-deserving. Like I said, I, she got my vote and we had a film in there. So um, to take second place behind that one, super pri- privileged there and I appreciate everybody who voted for for that film too. So um, always a great event. If you're at ATA show in the future, um, definitely uh, Badlands Film Festival is worth checking out. And I think, you know, after a while here, they actually kind of produce them and put them on YouTube too. So you can check out all the films there. But um, yeah, I guess as a whole ATA, pr- pretty darn good this year. Yeah. Congrats on on that second place. Pretty no trophy for the room. <laughs> um, yeah. So as far as trade shows go, Chris kind of mentioned ATA Shot Show. We will be doing some consumer shows this year too. Uh, we'll be doing the Iowa Deer Classic, Illinois Deer Classic. I think that's what they're called. Um, and that's about it. Next year we're looking to expand too. So if anybody wants to stop by, we'll probably be at the Iowa Show, Illinois Show, and uh, next year we'd love to get back to Harrisburg Great American Outdoor Show. Um, and some of the other classics, Minnesota, Wisconsin would be good. So always something that's kind of this time of the year's trade show year, catching up after ATA, um, circling back on all those conversations, basically coming up for the, with the plan for the fall of, of this year. And then, um, yeah, that's kind of what, what it looks like on the back end. So some consumer shows coming up too. Hopefully we'll see a few people out there. Maybe you can sign an autograph. I don't know if I'll go. Actually, I don't know. <laughs> One autograph. One autograph. Ever. It's one and only. Yeah. De- definitely got to double that this year. I'll bet on it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, moving past the ATA show, you know, what's everybody up to? You know, we talked a lot, or you guys talked a lot about what, what you guys are up to, you know, from a product standpoint and just getting things ready. You know, let's talk about the field. Let's talk about hunting. Let's talk about, you know, actually – uh, a movement in the direction of what what is to come. So are you guys spending any time in the field right now? If so, what does that look like? And if not, are you doing anything to prepare for, you know, the next weeks or months to come? Always thinking about shed hunting once the, the season closes here. I know some people, like I think Ohio goes into February and some other states keep going here for a little bit. Um, always thinking about sheds, always watching which bucks survived few have shed. I know you, you guys filmed one finding a shed yesterday over in Wisconsin. Um, I got a video on the reel a couple days ago of the buck walking by with uh, both sides missing. So they're, they're starting to shed and that's kind of on the mind right now for sure. Um, warm weather. I guess if you want to talk a little strategy about that, because um, I was, t- and I was talking to someone this morning about it, but you know, we got warm weather coming through. Typically, if it stays like that up here, that means less snow. That means more food available throughout the area in less condensed spots, which makes shed hunting more difficult. Um, so if conditions stay the way they are for the next month, I'm thinking shed hunting will be more difficult than than some years. Like when, when we got deep snow up here in Minnesota and we got standing corn or beans, like that's where you go. That's where the sheds are, right? Bed to feed, small transition area. 
years like this, we had one a couple of years ago where there was no snow on the ground and some of the big bucks that we know shed really close by, nobody ever found them because they could be out in the middle of a cornfield and they get chisel plowed in or something, right? So warm conditions are going to scatter sheds across the landscape, which is, means just more walking and a little bit more difficult shed hunting, but we'll still put the boots on the ground and, and get excited about it. But yeah, it'll, it'll definitely change the, st the strategy on, on that part of it. Yeah, for sure. That's, you know, that's, I think what everybody's thinking about, like you mentioned, we, we actually filmed the, the guys over there at homegrown pick one up yesterday. Uh, it was crazy that deer, he shed, uh, right by the, by Jeff's cabin there, um, like 30 yards from the cabin, uh, almost laying in the yard. And then, uh, I think we actually jumped that buck a little while after that. And he was still, you know, carrying the other side. Um, but yeah, I, I think that we're going to have that this year, what it's looking like right now anyway. And now it could change. I mean, most, most deer are still holding both sides. So if we get, you know, a cold snap after that, where it really drives into food, it could change, but it's looking like, um, yeah, going to be putting a lot of miles on the shed season because when you, when it's like that here, mild temperatures, not a lot of snow. I mean, they, they can be spread out, but that makes it kind of exciting too. Um, but also makes it tougher. So shed hunting is what I am looking forward to. Um, you know, we'll be doing some stand maintenance, um, moving some cameras around, starting to, uh, take, take cameras away from late season food sources now, um, after deer shed and start thinking about where to put them for spring, you know, use them a lot for turkeys and, and just deer antler growth as, as deer start growing. Um, so that's kind of exciting. It'll be here before you know it. I mean, shoot, we're, we're about to get into February here already. It seems like time's flying. Yeah, we're also going to be producing a lot more videos early this year. So hopefully we can um, release them earlier in the season, but we'll keep, we'll try to be more live, more up to date through Deer Society. And um, Brian wants me to be an influencer. So I'm going to post a couple more personal videos this year. We'll see. Um, JJ and Chris, <laughs> look at that. Just wait. The goal is to just kind of give a little bit better perspective or insight what goes on here you know we just talked about everything we do at illusion outside of deer society nobody sees that um so if it's of interest you know we can definitely post some updates on illusion post yeah. some updates on our personal stuff share it through deer society and just give people a little bit better uh visual back into the the other side of the business so that'll be the goal um hopefully just more live tips tactics behind the scenes um Chris, we could get some videos of you getting your pump on over there in the yep. in the workout room. I mean, we do have fun here too. Now that yeah. this isn't fun, but we do joke around and we goof around. It's oh yeah, it's not just always like you know, where's the next deer? How are we gonna get this deer? How are we gonna plant the next food plot? I mean, it's not just always strategy. We like to have some fun here too. So maybe we can show that a little bit off as well. For sure. Yeah. Here's how poorly I have ran my own personal Instagram. Yesterday, I'm trying to clean it up a little bit, trying to figure out what to post, like what do people want to see. I go to my messages and there's the category on the far right that's like not approved or, you know, like they're hidden over there. Requests, yeah. 2020, people are, I'm like, what are these messages from? It's like, congrats on Beamer. Like <laughs> all these messages that were coming in, like, oh, everybody in town, you know, they're wondering who you were and you shot Beamer and I knew who you were. And I was like, wow. That's three years ago and I haven't read any of these. So I apologize. I'm just not not a good social media guy. So we'll get better at it. Yeah. Better all around. And and, and yeah, to Chris's part, we do have some fun around here. Definitely some characters running around um the office, which never a dull moment. Um yeah, we, we have a lot of fun and we'll we'll do our best to to showcase more of that. Chris will go live more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even Chris has got a fun side to him. So. Try to. Oh, yeah. Well, well, lots of good stuff coming in 2024. Uh, it's been a great start to the year already, just coming from ATA and, and some of the things that, that are building in here through January. Um, definitely going to keep you updated on what's going on here from a podcast standpoint and out there, you know, social wise from Deer Society standpoint. YouTube, lots of content going out there still. Um, different videos, shorts, um, kind of all across the board, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok um, as well. So make sure you follow all those Deer Society channels. Keep up with what we're doing. Keep up with JJ and, and Chris and their their um, their rise to influential stardom. Um, and 
Uh, appreciate you tuning in. Well, we're going to keep you updated. Uh, good luck out there in the woods. If you start finding sheds, send us some pictures. If your bucks are shedding or you're getting reveal pictures, we'd love to see them. Uh, we'll keep you updated on what sheds we find here and some of the winter work that we're going to get started on. So thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. If you're listening, we appreciate it. Make sure you download the Free Deer Society app, uh, Google Play, or Apple, um, the Apple Store. Um, lots of good stuff on there. So appreciate you guys tuning in. Good luck out in the field, and we'll catch you next week. All our sponsors here at Deer Society are partners whose equipment we know we can trust are going to make you more successful and have a better experience in the field. Products like Illusion Systems, maker of the Black Rack, the Extinguisher, and the Phase Body Odor System. Tacticam, Reveal Cell Cameras, 10-Point Crossbows, Onyx Maps, Osseo Gear, Huyman, and Big Frig.